my kind of production style or how I like to think of my production style is is um, I like to try and capture things as kind of naturally as they come out. Really, I'm not um, I'm not really into sort of going right. Let's just process the hell out of this once we've once we've kind of captured it. For me, like the performance is the most important part of any recording session. Really, um, I'm a musician myself, and I think that kind of helps in a lot of ways because. You know, I, I have I have a sort of understanding of what it feels like to be in a recording environment and to and to be on the opposite side of the glass in a lot of ways, um, and so in on a kind of regular session, you know, a lot of what I see my role is is making feet uh, making sorry making musicians feel totally comfortable in what they're doing, and it's something I, I'm you know I'm quite proud to say is is something that people regularly give me quite positive feedback on is just the environment that, I, that we kind of create here at the Grand. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm hugely into big open drum sounds. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of stuff I work on tends to be kind of bigger rock music. That's kind of my background as a musician as well. Um, you know, quite fuzzy guitars and stuff, but ultimately um, big open natural sounding drums. Uh, I often kind of put ambient mics out in the corridors and stuff like that, just to really kind of, just to give you that more three-dimensional kind of feel around a drum kit, um, which, you know, for me as a listener is something I always look out for in a good recording as well. So, yeah, that's kind of a little bit about my kind of approach to recording, I guess. Um, it's more about what what you're putting that microphone up against than it is what you're doing after you've got the sound, I suppose. Hi, uh, we're outside the Grand Venue in Clitheroe, which is uh, where the Grand Studio is kind of situated. Uh, lovely market town of the road uh, so we just want to go into the venue and have a little look around we'll show you some of the uh, the bits and pieces in the studio in our venue as well so this is our venue space uh, it's a 450 capacity venue i think maybe 400 can't quite remember off the top of my head but uh, it's quite a quite a cool space it's been sort of bbc spec design so um I think it's got quite a similar kind of vibe to Made of Veil. I think it was the same same people that, that, that actually uh, did the acoustics in here, from what I remember. Um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Uh, so yeah, we, we can we can also record direct from stage, but obviously this is a fully kind of operational venue. We've got a DMB rig in here, um, DG Design profile up front of house, um, full kind of lighting rig and all sorts of stuff, but we've also got um, 16 analog ties from stage which goes straight down into the control room downstairs so we can record drums on stage which we've done a couple of times uh, when the room's free uh, and it's obviously a nice big room in here so so it can sound really cool um, obviously that all depends on venue availability etc but uh, yeah uh, so that's that's our venue space this is one of my favorite parts of the whole building it's not purpose built for this but it sounds really cool so occasionally I'll put a drum kit in here if I'm feeling naughty so, it's a big old stairwell uh, and it's just really really reverberant in here so sometimes I might actually use it as an echo chamber uh, which is obviously really really cool um, I've used it on a few, a few albums and records I've done recently we had uh, a chap at the bottom of the stairs, uh, whacking a snare drum as loudly as he possibly could, and I has a, a, an XY at the top here, just kind of picking that up, uh, which works incredibly well. So this is the smaller of our two live rooms, which currently is set up for uh, currently set up for a rehearsal space. So uh, the Grand is kind of a community venue as well, so we do a lot of kind of. Um, uh, sort of outreach projects and stuff like that in here, one of which is a long-term kind of band project that we do with local kids, so we kind of get them in, we train them up uh, to sort of be musicians in bands. But this is a smaller room, I often use it for kind of isolating amps and stuff like that, uh, if we're doing any kind of live recording. So there's four patch bays in here, uh, which again goes straight into the control room, one in each corner, uh, which is great. Um, back wall. I've never actually recorded drums in here but I'll bet it probably sounds great so I'll probably make sure I do that soon. Um, so yeah, should we have a look at the main live room now? So this is our main live space. Again 
this is just we just had a band rehearsing in here yesterday so we've got all these wedges out but generally speaking obviously we'd clear the room out if we were doing any recording uh it's quite a tunable room let will just take these battles down and you can see through obviously into the control room in there So uh, this room can kind of handle a lot of different different kind of sounds. Uh, at the moment, uh, we've got all the drapes back, which kind of makes it quite tight and clean. It's a little bit more lively down this end of the room. Um, but also, you know, if we've got kind of bigger, louder kind of rock, rock stuff in, we might open the curtains out and get it a little bit more exciting sounding in here, uh, which which sounds, sounds dead cool. I've uh, done a lot of kind of playing around in this room to actually find where the drums kind of sound the best and oddly enough I actually tend to set them up this way facing in that direction it just seems to uh, produce a kind of fatter sort of rounder sound particularly from the kick drum I guess because you've got a bit of shorter shorter space um, so yeah that's our main live room again four patch panels in this room so we've got uh, ample to kind of do live sessions as well which we do quite a lot in here too um, and then another thing that I like to do, you've probably guessed by now from my uh, excitement over the reverb chamber, I like big ambient sounds and big ambient space. So I do tend to put some mics out in our corridor out here, leave the doors wide open. Sometimes uh, the other members of staff don't like it when I do that, but you know, a drum sounds a drum sound in it. So um, we'll uh, go through to the control room. Now. Um, no, that is, that's not a pedal board. You can get that out in a minute if you want to look at that. There's some fun bits in it. So, here's the control room. Fully air conditioned, although it's off at the moment, so it's quite warm in here. Uh, but yeah, so uh, SSL AWS 900 Plus console. Got some really nice outboard, manly Neve 1081. Love that thing. Um, Focusrite ISA 430. Avalon 737, uh, really nice uh, Avalon uh, 2055 mastering EQ as well. I do quite a lot of mastering too, which I don't think I actually mentioned before. But um, and PMC monitors, Dyn Audio monitors. We've also got quite a nice selection of guitar amps. Uh, well, I say we, they're they're all mine, but uh, I like to use them on sessions. I'm actually quite lucky to be uh, endorsed by Hayden as an artist in my own right, so uh, I use those on sessions quite a lot, uh, which is nice. Thank you, Lee, for that. Uh, and lots of other bits and pieces. My Soldano, which is my favourite thing, but um, I'm a massive guitar nerd, uh, so I've got a lot of pedals as well. I don't know if you want to have a look at the pedals here. Yeah. So this is this is the height of my obsession as a guitar player. Um, so there's lots of messy leads on here as well. So I'll get them off first. Okay. So this board tends to feature on most most recordings that we do here, um, especially if uh, you know if if guitarists are kind of wanting certain sounds. There's not really much I can't get out of this really. Um, so generally, what I'll tend to do is set up a kind of nice selection of amps next door, and then use the pedals to tweak a lot of the tone. Um, which is kind of my preference as a guitarist anyway, and they're really flexible. So I've got everything from like nice kind of Dumble-esque tones in the Zen Drive uh, to sort of nice kind of chimey transparent overdrive tones through to absolute horror filth in the in the tight metal, which is a basically a PV5150 preamp in a box. Uh, it sounds ridiculous, and then I've also got the Strymon stuff, which is amazing. I occasionally use those as outboard sends as well. Uh, when I'm mixing, which is cool, um, just kind of give it a slightly different vibe. The plate on the blue sky is particularly nice, actually. Um, and then also, although these don't get used very often, I've got lots of octave effects as well, but that's more to do with my band anyway. Um, lots of big farty horrible noises. 
Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's my pedal board. We've also got a few bits of drum stuff. Uh, I play drums as well, so again, it's my gear, but I'm more than happy to use it on sessions. Um, but that's all next door. Again, I probably should have done this in the wrong direction, really. But uh, um, haven't even mentioned microphones. That's really important, isn't it? Um, so. my drum kit which gets used again quite on for quite a lot of sessions it's a uh, it's one of the cheaper Gretches actually it's a Gretsch Catalina uh, but it's got a 20 by 20 kick drum which is quite an unusual sizing um, but it's really really punchy and fat and I use it all the time sometimes I use this as a like a kick extender because it's a tends to be a little bit because it's a little bit narrower most most bass drums are like 22 uh, so this is a 20 uh, so sometimes I put that in front just to do the kind of kick cannon thing and that's really satisfying and nice uh, but that's that and yeah sounds good uh, really nice kit um, so yeah use that on loads of different sessions as well snare drums uh, what have we got this is a really nice vintage Rogers snare drum um, which I had to do some uh, slight repair work too recently, but it, it sounds really, really nice. I'm going to start using that on a lot of sessions. Um, I've also got a quite deep Tama. Uh, it's only, again, it's only one of the cheaper end of the drums, but it's a really, really flexible sound drum. It's a Tama Steelworks uh, snare which tunes down really, really nicely, so you can get that really kind of. Uh, kind of really fat and squishy kind of drum sound out of it, which is really cool. Uh, this is my incredibly messy cupboard. Uh, oh, we got this guy as well. Really little pearl brass piccolo jobby. So that tunes up really, really high. Or again, yeah, it really sounds surprisingly fat for a, for a narrow drum. Um, shallow drum even, sorry, narrow. And then this is my little Tama, which, kind of handles all sorts of different sounds really. You can crank it up and get a really, really tight kind of rock sound out of it, or you can tune it really, really low, uh, and it kind of produces a super kind of deep, fat kind of sound, which is a, a sort of sound that I'm like more and more with every passing day really. It just depends on the, you know, any excuse to kind of really tune a drum kit down and make it sound really uh, is, is good fun. Wise, um, we do actually share a lot of the mics with the venue upstairs, but uh, some kind of highlights really. We've got a, a UH7 AI um, a match pair, 4 on 4s. Uh, what else have we got? AKG Solid Tube, a um, uh, couple of uh, 3421s. Uh, we, we don't own one, but we have access to a couple of SM7s if we need them, which are great. Um, I love these these are mine again they're dead cheap they're obviously not Coles 4038s but they're cheap but really satisfyingly nice sounding sounding ribbon mics um, I think they discontinued them a while ago and then found a shipping container full of them and then gave them all to Anderton's down in Guildford so I managed to get a pair before they completely got rid of them um, uh, RE, RE20 we've got uh, what else Kid um, Kick drum, yeah. classic, and we've got Beta 52, D1 on 2, a um, couple, we've got uh, Beta 91, uh, E901, the kind of flat contact mic things, um, sub, homemade sub kick, something I made myself, uh, again, I'm kind of embarrassed about how messy it is in here, you know, but what are you going to do about it? I made that out of a Tannoy bookshelf speaker, um, works surprisingly well. And you just need to remember to flip the phase on it because I wired it up the wrong way. Um, uh, what else have we got? We've got some uh, Audio Technica 4033s upstairs as well that are quite good. A uh, match pair of AKG 451s, uh, about a thousand SM57s and SM58s, you know, classics. Um, Oh, a couple of Bayer bits as well, Bayer M88, I think that's, is that down here? No, it's not, all the mics are upstairs. Uh, Bayer and M a cassette machine. Uh, and a cassette machine, 
Yeah, which I don't think's ever been used. There's also a, uh, a DAP tape recorder in the control room, which I've turned on once, because uh, I don't think anyone uses that format anymore. Um, you know. Uh, there's a nice uh, bass amp that we use occasionally. Again, this isn't actually ours. It belongs to Elliot, who's the kind of assistant here. He's a great bass player. He's got a really nice vintage Rickenbacker, and he might let you use it if, if you're really nice. Um, but that's an Aguilar. He's got an Aguilar head as well. Which sounds really good. This is more Hayden clobber as well in here. It's a big old Hayden 4x12, which sounds great. Really similar to the orange 4x12, so it's really thumpy and thick. Um, uh, what else? Uh, we've got, oh, I didn't mention it when we were upstairs. We've also got a, uh, a beautiful um, Beckstein grand piano, uh, which Unfortunately, I can't wheel down to the studio as much as I'd love to, uh, but we can record it from stage uh, using the tie lines upstairs. Uh, I can't play piano, but several people can uh, and like to use it when possible, so uh, that's an option. I've just noticed we have a video cassette player here as well, uh, so if anyone's got any uh, copies of Bambi on VHS they want to watch, then that's available. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's kind of it. I mean, I can show you the... Uh, the kind of infrastructure for the venue, if that might be interesting for the, the nerds amongst us. Um, so this is the rack room. So this is where the whole kind of PA for the venue is. So we've got several um, uh, DMB audio D12s in there, which uh, power the main PA upstairs and all the wedges and everything. Uh, so this is where these are the where the tie lines come down from stage as well. So we've got our control room ties, which are all on here, which go straight through to the uh, patch bay in the control room, uh, as well as all the monitor ties. So pretty much every every room in the building is patchable to a, a certain degree, uh, which is pretty pretty handy. Um, again, there's a couple of things that I'd really like to have a go at in here, which uh, not in this room, but in the venue, which I haven't done yet, which is I haven't actually recorded properly a full drum kit from stage. Uh, because we also have a, an HDX DigiLink from the console upstairs, so we can get the full 48 channels from front of house. But obviously, I can't run the SSL pre's or any of that stuff when I'm doing that, uh, so we have to use the analog ties for that. Um, and I've not actually done that yet, usually because the venue is quite busy and gets booked out quite a lot. Um, but one day, I will have a go at that. And then uh, we've got. A nice little kitchen as well down here, which is pretty handy for, you know, just like if you want to have a little break, make yourself a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, I've got an oven in there as well, so, you know, it, it's quite, once the main outer door shut, you're kind of in here for you know, for the rest of time, really, until you've, uh, until I say you can go. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, the Grand Studio.